everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we are going to be starting our sew along for Clara the Cat and that's the character from the Apple Blossom Woodlands collection by Lily Rose Dolls. It's all a bit of a mouthful, it's all new to me so I'm just getting used to my tongue going around all of this. And today we're going to be talking about working with the pattern. You'll already have seen the announcement to say that we're working with Claire and Richard from um, Apple Blossom Wood collection by Lily, Lily Rose Dolls. And so you'll already have seen the announcement video and you'll also have seen the kit opening video. If you've not, you can pop along and have a little look there. But today we are working on Clara the Cat and here she is in her lovely kitted box just there. And so I thought that the very first thing that we're going to start, because we're going to start right at the very beginning, and that is going to be working with the pattern. So the pattern comes with the kit and it comes on these pages here and you'll need to go through your pages in order to find your patterns. And then once you've got your patterns, which we're just going to do a little sneak preview there, then you're going to need to make some templates for those because of the way that Claire works. And so when I met up with Claire recently to talk about the possibility of us working together, then Claire works slightly differently to me. Claire works like a proper sewist and um, pattern cutter, whereas I work more in um, the domestic market. And so there's a difference between the way that we prepare the patterns. So when you get your kit, you'll notice that none of the patterns have any seam allowance attached to them. And that's really normal in the couture and also in the professional sewing arena. Whereas in the domestic market, we're probably more used to dealing with a quarter of an inch, 1.5 centimetre or one centimetre seam allowance. And so that might be a little bit strange for people to work with to start off with. So. I thought we'd start together right at the very beginning so that we can hold each other's hands through this and I'll be learning as well as we go through. And I'm going to use Claire's methods for creating her characters because I can't deny that the result is absolutely stunning. So let's um, let's have a delve into this and see where we are. So if you want to get your kit um, and your pattern, whichever pattern you're working with, this is going to be the same for working with any of the, of the um, patterns and I'll refer people back to this video so that they can pick this up and, and work with this. Um, and we're going to be talking about ways to work with your pattern to make your templates and then to mark those onto your fabric as well. So we might not work on the fabric today. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself as you know I can do sometimes. So today is just going to be about how to copy your patterns and to cut those out and then to make your templates. So if you want to get together your um, you can need some card and you can use old cereal packets. It's really is Blue Peter moment, isn't it? You can use any kind of card. So have a look in your recycling bin and see what you can reuse. Otherwise, sometimes from um, arts and craft shops or from stationers, you can buy lengths of card if you want to have something that's pristine. You can also do that um, and get a, a decent sized piece because I'm sure these characters are going to be addictive. So I think we're going to be making some more of these. Um, and you want some glue as well and you're going to need a pencil and probably a rubber or I might as well and then we're going to talk about the ways that you can do this because not everybody has access to a photocopier so if you've got a photocopier then it's straightforward just to copy your pattern pieces and the reason why I'm saying that is because I've learned over the years and ask me how I've learned but to keep all of your pattern a master copy of your pattern pieces because over time they can get a bit dog-eared or if you cut out your original straight away and you've already bought the pattern once, then you're not going to have access to that pattern again. So I would suggest that you actually get into the habit, if you don't mind me suggesting this, um, of making a copy of your paper pattern so that you can then use the copy of the pattern solely for your own use but just so that you can then turn that into your templates because then if you're not sure about anything in the future you can refer back to your master copy and you've got that already intact for you to be using again. It might seem like a bit of a, a an extra step and obviously if you're not somebody who, who is bothered about having templates um, or keeping the master copy intact then absolutely you know you do it your way that's absolutely fine but I'm there to try and give you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that just means that I can use my patterns time and time again and I've always got that master copy to refer to. So I hope it appeals to you anyway. If not, and you're happy just cutting up your pattern, then that's fine, just skip ahead to the next stage and, and I won't know, so it doesn't matter to me at all and I don't mind. 
Okay, but for those who want to stick with me and who want to do it my way, then let's get on with talking about tracing the paper pattern. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is if you just photocopy your pattern, obviously for your own personal use, because it is all copyrighted, then there's something that you need to be aware of because I've printed these two arms out today as a photocopy. And at first glance, they might look like they're absolutely identical. But when I held the pages up to the light, and I've only cut out one because I don't want to show the whole pattern here. I hope Claire doesn't mind me just showing this, um, this arm for now. Can you see the difference at the top there in the height? So this one was printed out at scale to fit, the page, and this one was printed out 100%. So I need you to, to, to be able to see the difference in that pattern piece, which is only look, might look minimal, but if we start to do that on all of the pattern pieces, your character isn't going to turn out the same way. So you really need to make sure that if you are photocopying, you print it out at 100% so that you don't get that slight reduction by the page just being reduced down slightly. And as I say, it might look like it's only minimal, but that will make a difference, especially on the clothes as well. So we need to make sure that we, we've covered that. So I'm now going to get rid of my smaller one so that I don't get mixed up. But then using the, the correct size one, I'm then going to show you a couple of ways that you can use to trace your pattern off if you've not got a photocopier because not everybody has that at home. You can go to copy shops and local libraries, they tend to have copying facilities, but it's also really useful to know how you can do it quickly and easily and for free at home. So let me just um, get my pieces together. Now I was talking about scale and then we'll get on with this. So one of the ways that you can um, trace your pattern piece is just using tracing paper. Grease proof paper works okay, but if you're using grease proof paper, just be careful because the ink can transfer onto your fingers because of the nature of it. But you can put your tracing paper over the top of your character, oh, where's my pencil gone? Um, off your, over your character part, and then you can then trace around the edge. Now, I've, obviously I've already cut this one out, but you would just put your tracing paper over the top of your sheet of um, the original pattern trying to think of my words while I'm tracing and then you'll be able to then trace this out just around the edges just make sure that you weight it down or that you've got your exact pages and I usually go around it in pencil first and then I can go around a little bit more um, detailed heavier in an um, actual pen make sure you copy all of your your grain line and there's an opening mark on here as well and then also we're going to write on it that it's the arm cut for and it's for Clara. Okay, so we've got that down. Let's put the opening on there as well. So then you've got a traced copy of your pattern, your piece. Then all you'll need to do then is, and I, what I find is that if you just roughly cut it out to start off with, so just take off the excess of the tissue paper. Then what you can do is I've got some paper, you've got some card here. You can then use your glue and then making sure you've got something so that you don't get glue everywhere. Because believe me, I do sometimes. Just try not to put too much glue on. A bit of a scrum in the middle there. And then I'm going to use that then to stick onto my Paper. Just make sure that with tissue paper, you don't get any folds or creases in your in your paper in your pattern piece at all. You want it to fit on quite nicely onto your paper like that. And then you're going to then just quickly rough rough cut that out as well, so you can move on to the others, or you can do a whole load in one go, depending on what you want to do. So you're going to let that dry, so that's all nice and neat. And then when that's dry, you're then going to go round and you're going to cut out on the actual edge of the piece of your pattern itself. Just like this. And you're going to want that to be as neat as possible. Now you'll notice at the moment I haven't added any seam allowance to these pieces and that's deliberate. So let's just carry on with this for the moment. I've not forgotten, don't worry. Just putting that out, just so we've got a lovely 
rounded edge at the top there and put our bits away. And then I would then go over that in a, put a Sharpie here and then I would just go with my pencil marks to say that's Clara. Oh, look how that tissue paper is not dried yet. And our, our grain line to make sure that's all nice and straight and obviously make sure you're right on top of it. And then we want on here cut four as well. And this is the arm. So there we go, there's our there's one piece already for you, all just done out of paper. If you haven't got any tracing paper, then the other thing that you can do, and I'll demonstrate on the window here, but I'm not sure how good it's going to be, is that you can actually use your window itself in order to be your light box. So that's another thing that is really useful to do. And you'll, for that, you'll just need some tape and then some, some um, just some paper that you can use for copying and you'll need your pattern piece. And I'll show you how we can trace that using the window. Okay, so here we are at our, my sewing room window. And if I kind of set inside, sometimes I can block some of the light, but there's the arm is stuck on here with a little bit of sellotape or you can use blue tack as well, but it's got to be quite flat because then what you're going to do is take your piece of paper and you're going to put it over the top of your shape. Oh, and it does work quite well, look. And then you can then see your shapes and the ink mark through your piece of paper and then holding your piece of paper nice and straight and flat you can then trace over your pieces this way so again it's just a, another way that you can use just make sure that you keep everything all flat and all nice and neat and make sure it doesn't slip and then you can then trace your pattern pieces off that way and that gives you a really good representation and obviously then you don't need to have a photocopier um, and um, to do that. The other way that I'm just turned off the window before, before it means I've got a job to clean the window when I want to be sewing instead. The other thing that I have got is I got a quilting table with my um, sewing machine and if you put your pattern piece flat on here and then you then put your paper over the top. Then if you use your phone as your light source, so if you're trying to do this in an evening because that's the only time that you get to sew and you haven't got the daylight, if you put the, the um, torch on, on your camera and then shine it from underneath, you will get the same effect as holding your um, papers up at your window and you'll be able to trace that out that way instead. So I just wanted to give you a couple of ways just to be able to trace those out um, because not everybody has access to a photocopier or we might want to be doing it now and not wait until we've actually got um, the time to go into town in order to get it copied. So I just thought it was worth telling you a couple of ideas that I've found over the years that work for me because I'm impatient, as, as you might have guessed. Okay, so you can guess what I'm gonna be doing for the next hour or so, is I'm going to be tracing off all of my pace, piece, paces, all of my pattern pieces onto, from my master copy of my pattern, onto another sheet of paper. I'm then going to be gluing those onto my card background, and then I'm going to be cutting those out on the line. So I haven't added any seam allowance at all, and that's deliberate. Now, because I'm learning as you learn, and that's the best way to do it, then I am going to be working with just the head and the body pieces first in this method, because with my dressmaking, I'm more used to having a seam allowance already sewn on. So I might well change this, um, this video when we get on to working with the clothes, um, but when we get to the first video, part one of sewing the clothes, then I, I'll, um, I'll tell you whether or not which way I've chosen to do it in the end. But I'm going to trust the process and I'm going to do it Claire's way because she's the expert and I'm just I'm just copying off what she does. And and as I said, her results speak for themselves. So I'm not going to second guess this. Um, so for now, I'm just going to do the, the character's body and limbs um, and head, obviously. Um, and then we'll come back later to work on the clothes at that stage. So... Yeah, hope you've enjoyed this one to me today. I hope it's given you a couple of ideas as to how to be able to just copy your pattern across if you've not um, done that before. And if you're working with me for the first time, then bear with me. I'd, 
they can be a little bit waffly my videos can be but I try to put in as much technique as I can do and if you already know how to do something then just jump ahead um, you don't need to stick around and listen to all of it and get frustrated just jump ahead to the bits where you need the extra help um, and that's absolutely fine by me as I say I don't mind so once again I just want to say a big thank you to Claire and to Richard of um, Lily Rose Dolls and their Apple Blossom Woodlands collection um, Clara cat kit um, and for, for sponsoring this video really and for allowing me to recreate their characters in, in video format and I hope you'll click the subscribe button and you'll click the notifications bell as well and join with me as we get on with make, the next stage of making our character. So thank you for watching everybody, happy stitching, bye!